Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chartwise Women with Erin Swendlin and Mary Ellen McGonigal. Welcome to our Thursday, January 28th show. Mary Ellen and I are here to educate, engage, and most importantly, empower you to take control of your investments. Well, today, uh, Mary Ellen, we're going to be in, in uh, the theme of the upcoming Super Bowl. I figured we would yes. come in with a football theme this week. Well, it certainly has felt like a football game in the markets with the back and forth and uh, <laughs> exactly. a few tackles and uh, penalties and all kinds of uh, shenanigans taking yes. place. So I think. So, who do you think is going to win? By the way. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Super Bowl! Yes. I I I don't know who's playing. Uh, whoever <laughs> uh, Tom Brady. Oh, the Buccaneers. Yeah. Did I yes, get that right? Yes. That's okay. right. And then the Chiefs are playing them. So okay. I, I want to uh, I actually want Tom Brady to, to pull it out for Tampa Bay, but I have yeah. a feeling that the Chiefs are going to. Oh, up I agree with you. Yes. Now that you say that they have an incredible uh, coach. He was uh, I'm from Philly and he coached the Eagles has a great track record. So I, I kind of agree, but it'll be. Yeah, a good game. yeah. Well, and I have to say this was a great year of football for me. I play fantasy football every year. Mm -hmm. And this year I went into the finals. I ended up losing um, in the finals because uh, Russell Wilson just didn't perform. <laughs> oh, nuts. He, he didn't pull it out for me and uh, receivers. But in any case, I'm very proud that I did finish in the money. So that was nice. <laughs> oh, good for you. Yeah. They don't but... like uh, the, the one and only girl, if you will, in the league coming in in the top three every year. But hey, that's what you get. <laughs> you know what? You got it. <laughs> so let's talk about um, playing defense in, in our portfolios. I know yesterday this theme might have been a lot more interesting to a lot of people given the decline we saw in the market. Today, of course, we are seeing a rebound. But overall, I think that you know the market is weakening and we need to start thinking about playing defense in our portfolio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do we do in order to play defense? You know, obviously there's the first one where you can just get completely out of the market. And then there's the other way, which is to take advantage of sector rotation into some of the defensive sectors, into the um, value rather than growth stocks. So anyway, my wisdom of the week is that when the market is weak, as I'm suggesting that it might be here, defensive stocks can actually keep you in the game. So you can still have those, um, you can still have some exposure to the market and keep your portfolio healthy. Yeah, I like that. I agree. It's always good to have a diversification is something that I speak to quite a bit. And as it relates to my work and defensive stocks, I will use those same principles that drive me to select stocks and areas among growth. And that is going to be areas that uh, stocks that have growth prospects and are also going to offer you that defensive nature so that you can be buffered from any continued volatility that we might see. So a lot of the names I'm going to be sharing are going to be thematic as mm -hmm. far as areas that are working in the broader markets, but are defensive and uh, have attractive charts. So excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So let's uh, dive in. And I think we should probably, uh, we're going to talk about reading the market's playbook. And one of the ways we can read the playbook is to watch sector rotation. So I'm just going to show a really quick um, diagram here. And this is found in Chart School on stockcharts.com. And this gives you sort of an idea of how, here are all your sectors. And then you can see which ones are going to perform better based on where we are in the market. So if we're at a top, which I kind of think we are at this point or getting close to it, these are the sectors that you would expect to start doing well on the way down. So that's why we want to kind of concentrate in these sectors right here, which we consider mostly defensive. So uh, that's what we're going to really um, concentrate on today. Obviously, there's rotation throughout the market all the time, and not this doesn't hold true perfectly, but it certainly gives you an idea of what might be going on in the market. So let's look at what uh, groups and sectors are doing right now. And this is the sector summary. 
So what I like to do is I, I pull it up in candle glance so that I can see all the charts and just a little, um, I can see them all at once. And this really gives you a pretty good, just looking at momentum will give you a pretty good idea of what that rotation, what rotation is going on. So you can see that most of these sectors, um, materials, energy, obviously hurting, industrials, um, discretionary, which has been doing well, is losing momentum. Um, XLC is still a pretty decent place to be because you can see it's on that buy signal and we're still seeing that rotation up there moving momentum into comm services. And staples, you know, I was seeing that curl on momentum turning up. It turned down yesterday, but it looks like it might be trying to curl up again. So this is, uh, Staples was one of the areas that I was uh, gonna concentrate on in some of my scans that I do, um, because I wanna get in early. If, if we're really starting to see that big momentum shift, you can see back here, uh, momentum shifts can be very uh, profitable. So. Uh, you can also see XLRE, real estate sector is doing well, and utilities. So these are all areas that are considered defensive. And XLU, where is my XLU chart here? Uh, I'm losing. I know it's on here. <laughs> it's there somewhere. <laughs> Okay, there it is right there. So you can see that it's also been on a buy signal. It dipped just like Staples did, but it's now bottoming above that signal line. So that tells me that the rotation right now is definitely toward the defensive areas of the market. So that's kind of where I wanted to concentrate. Um, so did you want to look at any of those sector charts more closely or I can pull them up? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think you have that great thumbnail view. We can always pull out and you'll see with XLU, for instance, on uh, Tuesday, we did get that nice, it really looked to that the utility stocks were reversing that downtrend. But as you suggested, they're kind of waffling a little bit here, but uh, we could be very much in the formation. And some of this is recovery related as well with these utilities. Well, I don't know if we should get into that yet. We're still <laughs> we can get into whatever we want. Oh, well, I like it. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, let's go. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. Just talking about uh, one of the reasons that utilities faltered so much out of that bear market is because people were working from home. Corporates, corporations, offices were dark. And so there was not as much need while it people were increasing their electricity usage at home. It did not anywhere near make up for the loss elsewhere. So some of that utility move could be a recovery, a recovery play, but then also there are themes within that and it's gonna be all about alternative energy. So we can maybe drill down as we move on. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I think that's really where we wanna go next. Perfect. Yes, so we're gonna talk about our favorite defensive plays in the market. So basically what we're talking about here is we're gonna look at some of our favorite industry groups within these areas. And I'm gonna pass it to you. We've been looking at my screen long enough. Mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and look at yours. I wanted to see what kind of industries you're kind of focusing in on. Oh, you bet. So is this all sectors or uh, we can Sure, focus? all sectors, whatever is looking good to you as far as uh, industry groups go. Okay, so I'm going to start with utilities simply because we were just looking at that area. And then from here, I'd like to share some of the stocks that are capturing my attention. These are names that I have had on my MEM edge list in the past. They have superior management and they are in vibrant areas within utilities. First up here is Duke Energy. I'm gonna pull up a monthly chart very quickly, just to give you a bit more in the way of perspective. And you can see that it does have a really great history of outperformance. And so this is an, uh, a stock that was on our list back here, 2018 into 2020. The company is very involved in alternative energy. It's an area that they pivoted into about 10 years ago, and it is continuing to propel their uh, the stock higher as usage is uh, the same, they're allowed to get the same fees, but for them, their costs are greatly reduced with alternative energy. One other name that we can take a 
quick look at on that same theme is Nextera Energy and EP or NEE is another way to uh, take a look at that. And this is another alternative energy play within uh, utilities. And again, you can see just the superior outperformance and it's all about pivoting to these less expensive, uh, certainly more economically favorable areas as far as providing energy. The stock did pull back after having a nice hit run to new highs earlier in the week, but it found support here at this 21 day moving average. We can see that the RSI remained up here above this net neutral 50 and the uh, moving average convergence divergence and other momentum indicator. It is telling us that it is a bit overbought at this level. So a pullback is uh, highly acceptable. But those were stocks there in that area that uh, caught my eye. And then, awesome. So you're looking yeah. at the conventional utilities, I mean, electricity, those you sorts bet. of plays within um, utilities. Yes, yes. That's actually the sub-industry grouping is going to be uh, utilities that are uh, diversified. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to share my screen here really quickly. Hopefully that came through. Um, Okay. Yeah. You can see my screen, correct? You bet. It's there. <laughs> all right. So I've sorted all of the uh, sectors by uh, scooter ranking. And clearly right now in the bottom are these defensive sectors. And so that might concern a person. But let's go ahead and look back just a little bit here. And again, you're going to probably see these mostly on the bottom here, consumer staples especially. Uh, I'm actually going to go into consumer staples because I am starting to see some movement with, again, as we were looking at it, the momentum is starting to really pull, move to the upside. And obviously, drug retailers are one of the better areas of the market right now. Uh, Rite Aid has been a favorite of mine. It's really overbought right now. But, you know, we're seeing, this is just an example. We are seeing a lot of movement in the Staples area. And obviously drug retailers seem to be enjoying a lot of that move to the upside. Uh, Pet Med Express, this is a little different as far as a drug retailer. Uh, we had a really huge spike yesterday and then a giant pullback right now. So maybe that um, the, on that really big pullback, we might be looking at something good, but Mary Ellen, I almost think that you probably have uh, information about why we had this spike over the last uh, day or two. I know we, uh, obviously GameStop has been in the news because of all of the uh, movement there, but yeah, big, huge pullback here on pet meds, but it's bringing it right back here, right to the support level yeah. of this, this August top. This stock is part of that uh, short squeeze play, the short interest in uh, pet med. And someone actually highlighted this in our last week's show because we were looking at this stock related to our uh, last part of our uh, our last segment that there was a lot of short interest and yes there is 17 percent of the volume in pet med is short so it was part of that squeeze play and you can right. look at uh tootsie roll tr you'll see a bunch of these uh mm -hmm. consumer staples that got sucked into that uh short squeeze play yeah that was that's um that was really interesting. I've never seen anything quite like that, but you know, <laughs> with all of the different uh, investing avenues that we have and all of the internet, you know, of course, messaging that goes across, obviously this was something that, um, you know, we used to see this in penny stocks, remember? <laughs> oh boy, yeah. <laughs> so Gosh. some of the, yeah, so some of the other areas that I was looking at, um, real estate is another one that I very oh, much- can we touch on one with uh, consumer staples before yes. we get out? And this is going to be more of a play on the uh, momentum in this grouping. And we can take a quick look uh, at Tilray, T-L-R-Y. And there are about four stocks in this grouping. And this has everything to do with Oops. Biden's uh, more relaxed stance as far as criminalizing uh, cannabis. I'm sorry, I missed that symbol. Oh, uh, T-L-R-Y. Tilray, of course. Tilray. I and spelled it wrong. <laughs> sure, yeah. So we can see that the stock has had a nice uptick here 
and it is very much in an uptrend, pulled back a little bit, but it's poised for potential another leg up. They've been in the news quite a bit. It's not just momentum due to cannabis. There are growth prospects on the horizon. And we can also take a look at Kronos, C-R-O-N, another one uh, C on, in that space. And you'll see similar uh, dynamics as far as having that nice spike and then a pullback here that could easily uh, be a buy point. And then one last one, I do have a couple of names, but we can look at NBEV and it's in the beverage space, but it is also related. They do have the, um, well, it's not cannabis. I'm trying to think of the other, the derivative where they can add it to the beverages and it uh, very small amounts, but you can be relaxed and uh, you know, whatever, uh, but, New Beverage NBEV is the ticker. It is a $3 stock and that uh, bears noting you will get yeah. a little bit more in the way of volatility there, but I'm noticing that the MACD is just turning positive and we're potentially forming the right side of a base. So yeah, excellent. Nice cup mm -hmm. shape here. Uh, maybe, you know, we've gotten that pullback to the 20 day EMA. These are the kind of setups you want to see a crossover buy signal here and then a positive RSI. So this one still looks like it has room to move higher. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and go into a break and then we're going to come back with some more of our um, favorite defensive plays. I have to say it is my honor and privilege to host a show with my father. I was so excited that I was able to talk him into joining the show and now he's just, he loves it. Uh, the insight I get from him, even offline, is wonderful. But to be able to share that with everybody else so they can see just the experience and really I just have been so fortunate in growing up with him and having him help me learn and I think it's great for other people to have that opportunity to learn from him as well. All right, we are back from break and we have our football theme going on today um, as we prepare for the Super Bowl coming up. And we've been talking about playing defense uh, more than playing offense today. And we've been looking at some of our favorite uh, defensive plays, if you will, in the various industries and defensive sectors. And now we wanna look and we're continuing to concentrate on these areas and we're gonna look at some of the stocks that we feel are ready for a touchdown. And uh, NBEV was what Mary Ellen showed us right before the break. And I really like that as a touchdown yeah. stock. What else do you have for us? Yeah, so let's go ahead. I think we're gonna move into another area that is viewed as defensive, higher yielding, and it is the REIT stocks. XLRE is the ticker for those S&P real estate sector. And really this is a very nice setup here as far as this industry grouping. It had been waffling here, a lot of it having to do with office space not being leased, of course, hotel related, uh, REITs are suffering, and then commercial real estate with offices. So a lot of uh, certainly lack of uh, lease space as far as retail as well. But what we're seeing here is a nice recovery into the end of last year. You can see this big spike here on the vaccine news, all about recovery, anticipation of people moving about more and going to offices later in the year. But more recently here, we're getting this nice potential base breakout very constructive looking. Your RSI is positive. MACD just turned positive. So from here, you can, of course, go ahead in and take a look at some of those underlying uh, sectors. Aaron, I'm, I'll let you do that. But I just thought I would share a name or two that are bubbling up within the REIT space. This one did pull back, but I would put it on your radar screen. This is Crown Castle. CCI is the ticker. I'm going to pull up a longer term chart here and share a little bit of history. But uh, you can see I like these stocks that have historical precedent as far as being able to outperform this. Again, I'm quite familiar with the company. It was on our buy list over a year ago. But more recently, the company is involved in the real estate towers for the 5G expansion. And they're the largest purveyor of those towers. 
And that, of course, is a uh, growth area. So I certainly wanted to share that with you. Uh, AMT is another one that's in that space as far as the 5G related towers. They're a little bit earlier in their turnaround, but we have broken back above these shorter term simple moving averages. We can see we're poised here for what's called a golden cross when the shorter term moving averages cross above the positive. And then our outside momentum indicators are positive. I'm just going to really pay attention to how it behaves here at this blue 200 day simple moving average. But if we can get above that, I see no reason why AMT uh, could not continue to advance. We can see it was a big winner going into that bear market all about 5G. Excellent. Okay, well, I have a couple of real estate plays that I definitely am liking right now. And let me go ahead and share my screen. One of the, there are two areas in real estate that I've been watching, and that is the retail uh, REITs. And let's go back here to the dashboard. I want to show you why I'm seeing this right now. These were just some of the areas that I like. So real estate, we just pull that up. And like I said, I'm liking the retail REITs right now. I've got a couple of them to share as well as some of the specialty REITs. And again, you can see the scooters are a little bit on the low side right now, but I think a lot of these are getting ready to, to break out and do well. So one of the ones that um, I'm looking at is uh, public storage. And actually, I'm going to find you a better chart of it here. All right, there. Here we go. Um, this is one of my favorites right now. And let me go ahead and expand this a little bigger for you. And one of the things I really liked about this one was, first of all, this very nice um, falling wedge is what we call them. And that is a bullish pattern. And what we want to expect, of course, is an upside breakout. And you can see that this one's just starting to get started as far as momentum goes. You have that crossover buy signal. We ended up getting um, moving it into positive territory above the zero line. And again, it looks like we are going to get that breakout. Look at the positive RSI, not at all overbought. And this PMO, uh, our momentum is certainly not overbought. You have rising bottoms on both of these indicators on balance volume as well as the scooter. So this was one that I very much like. And Site C is another one. So that was a specialty read. This is a retail REIT and I'll make it nice and big for us all. There we go. And you can see this one had already broken out and now it's pulling back to this area of support, which I really like. Um, you could set a stop, you know, just under this low back here. But honestly, with a lot of these, I set pretty deep stops and you can always make that deci <clears throat> decision later on if you don't like that it's crossed below the 20 day EMA, for example. Um, you know, it's just sort of a suggested area. But you can see again, another crossover buy signal, rising momentum, positive RSI, not too overbought. And like I said, a nice little breakout here. So yeah. this was and a lot of these one. have nice yields. Their STOR is another one, store capital in the retail, 3.6% yielder. And these are uh, purveyors of squares, or I'm trying to think of the terminology of uh, their outdoor retail places that mm -hmm. primarily have uh, needed uh, stores such as drugstores, convenience, and so forth. So a lot of their uh, buildings have been remained open. And uh, so that's another one to potentially consider as a turnaround candidate Excellent. at some point. Excellent. Really, I can see that sort of a cup shape possible handle here. Mm -hmm. And there is that possibility we're going to get that bounce. The momentum is shifted lower as it's backed off and formed like this a uh, little bit of a handle to the cup. But the expectation is if we can get that bounce off the 50, I think this one is looking pretty ripe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, excellent. Were there any more that you had in mind? I think I... one other, the winner for me, this is actually out of consumer staples. I'll sort of shift gears just a little bit since we're looking at touchdown stocks. And this is one that I very much like. Um, I had suggested this one back on Tuesday. We did end up with a really big pullback, but we're starting to see it move back up after testing that 20-day EMA. Look at the setup here as far as momentum. We have momentum crossover here on the PMO. It's not overbought. 
And the RSI is a little on the overbought side, so that's something to consider. Um, but we may end up seeing just a little pause maybe before we get started. But overall, you know, you can hold on to these overbought conditions um, when you, you know, when you're seeing a really nice move, uh, breakout move in a rally. Oh yeah. I, Absolutely. I agree. It looks very interesting. And maybe a couple of other names I can just go ahead and sure. share with you in that re, uh, in the consumer staple area. And uh, we can take a look at Whirlpool WHR. That's been a really big winner as individuals are uh, making their homes certainly more updated, given that we're spending an awful lot of time in there. But uh, we can see Whirlpool had that nice base breakout here, a lengthy four-month base. And it is pulling back rather sharply this week. Uh, but we can see also it has a nice 2.5% yield. And this pullback, very natural. The stock did get into an overbought position, but your outside momentum indicators are still positive. And uh, I think that's it. We're, we need to, uh, why don't we take a time? Yes. A time. Let's go ahead and move on to yeah, that happened. Uh, Mary Ellen scans the internet space and she finds us some of the most interesting articles. You want to tell us about this yeah, one? Yeah, actually our producer Eric found this one this week and it's all oh. about uh, a company that provides coconut milk and unfortunately they were using uh, animals and in particular monkeys to provide the labor. They were forced to pick these uh, coconuts. So uh, over a thousand smaller companies did pull the product from their shelves, but Target and Costco joined this week and it really brought it to the forefront as far as headline making news. So good news there because this was in Thailand where restrictions are a little bit lo more lowered, but uh, they did pull the product. So uh, there's yeah. your news headline for this week. Uh, helping to save these uh, monkeys. Let's take a look at a couple of stocks and we can certainly of course begin by taking a look at Target. And they of course are a major retailer. This is a daily price chart of Target and it had been a real winner here. They've really done quite well as far as pivoting to digital sales. They have same day delivery, curbside pickup. Uh, they did hit a new high. However, the stock pulled back rather sharply this week. We have that RSI now in negative territory. I think it's going to be interesting to see if it can hold support here at this 50 day. We can see that it historically has been able to do that and rebound. So keep this one on your radar screen. Erin, uh, if you want to look at Costco, it's up to you or I can- Oh, go ahead and pull it up. You've got your screen sure. already. Sure, yeah. This is another company that banned the coconut milk product. And we can take a quick look at uh, this one. I'm also very familiar with. It had been a winner for us until it broke support here. Costco, of course, the big box retailer. And they also had made great strides as far as same store sales and uh, digital sales and so forth. But we are seeing a lot of these bigger retailers falter here. It is now currently Costco is in a downtrend, we can see our outside momentum indicators are down below that net neutral zero. And then one last one, because we want to see confirmation that these big box stores are struggling. Walmart here. It did hit a new high back here at the uh, beginning of December, but since then has really suffered quite a bit from here. Wow. So I'm wondering if, we, do we have time for Let's see, we have time for, it looks like one more and then we'll, we'll say goodbye. So this is KHC and we can see the stock in line with some of these other consumer staples are uh, reversing. Yeah, it, yeah, I like that. I definitely like the chart. Well, it's been great having everybody here. We've got to say goodbye, happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.